Alrighty, hello YouTube. It's me again, Simon. Back for more. Um, had some pretty, some pretty uh, positive feedback on my last Cinema 4D tutorial. Um, so I decided that I would do another one while I've got some uh, free time in my holidays from uni. Alright, so I'm going to be doing a bit of a, a, a transition that I... Um, that I saw done by a giant octopus, which is an awesome design company. Um, I'll just show you where I got the idea. Um, just play this. There we are, a little plane flying on with, following an arrow and then the transitions into the next scene. All right, so that's that. So basically we've got this little arrow which we extrude along a spline with the plane flying above it. Not very realistic, um, propellers going very slow, flying over a map, nicely detailed one, and then the arrow hits the circle, plane flies away, and we get a transition um, with this this colour uh, this colour here. It's actually blue, but you, I've keyed it out in After Effects, which we'll do at the end, and then transition into the next slide I've got a uh, just a just a picture here but as you can see if I use the the transparency oh whoops what am I deleting oh wrong one alrighty so if I use the transparency thing you can see that I've just keyed out the center of that circle as we come across it just zooms out of the whole the whole slide okay cool let's um hop into cinema 4D Okay, so here's the my project which I finished a few months ago, uh, just in the viewport, um, so you can sort of see what's happening. That blue color is what we key out. Okay, now in the in the description uh, down below, I've got the uh, the link for the um, the plane I'm going to use. It's um, from TurboSquid.com. Um, they're a pretty good site. Um, they have some awesome awesome but also very expensive models uh, they don't have many free ones there are some other um, free model websites that you can look up like 3d extras um, and 3d model free or something like that just google free 3d models and the first five are really good sites that you can just get some pretty average quality uh, stuff from okay so I'm going to create a new project in cinema 4d here I'm going to go file um, uh, where are we? I want to import. Oh no, okay, we do it over here. So you go window, content browser. And just wait for that to come up. Man, it's taken a while. Alrighty, so I've got, I've downloaded my, um, my Cessna from Turbo Squid already. It's just on my desktop, which I've just got to find with all the textures. There it is. So I'm just going to drag that, click and drag, into the viewport there, like so. Now it's brought all the materials in with it, because it took it from another Cinema 4D file. Um, as you can see, um, it's just a pretty basic plane, not very realistic. don't think I've ever seen one of these in my life. Um, somewhat resembles a Cessna, I suppose. <laughs> not a very good one. Anyway... Um, to render the viewport, you just hit Control and R at the same time. Now, this is telling me that all the textures aren't in yet. We'll fix that in a second. So, as you can see, it's just a little, um, little, little model, not very high quality, and um, the textures will make it look a whole lot better. So, the textures come with the model. So, you just click on each of these materials down here and uh, load them up. So, this rwin.jpg just find that on my desktop I've got it here somewhere right wing and left wing I think that's what there it is right wing dot jpeg where are we there it is cool so that's the first one I'm not going to create a copy at the file location you can if you want um, makes it easier for moving the project around um, now just going through all these and because I'm already at the right file location, I don't have to go searching for them. I've just realized, so I just click open. Click no. As you can see, this one here has already got the texture on it now. As you can see, it's sort of starting to take shape. Um, alrighty. 
just go through all those and nearly there red.jpg what really okay um, that doesn't need anything that doesn't need anything and that does okay last one cool so if you can uh, okay now for those of you who don't know to move around the viewport in Cinema 4D you um, hold the number one and click and drag and that will just pan around hold two click and drag that will zoom in and out hold three click and drag and you can rotate around wherever you may wish um, to get rid of this wireframe if you really don't like it you can just go up here um, and just change to this see if we unselect that you know, but if we choose that one we got the lines on it okay I'm just gonna give this a quick render see how it all goes beautiful so that's control R again as I said um, okay now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the propeller um, it's in three parts so hold control and click on the three parts of the uh, the propeller on oh, no, it shift shift that's it hold shift <laughs> um, we've got the Ah, uh, it's called the air screw. Okay, that's a weird name, but then again, I am not a pilot, so I probably have no clue. All right, so I'm just going to move them out of that group up to the top there by just clicking and dragging them, and um, I'm going to group these three. I'm going to connect objects and delete. That will copy them all into one object and delete the other three objects that are left behind. So I'll just click that. Now we've got one thing left and up the top here just click the rotate button. Ooh, okay, so what we've got a problem here is see if we rotate that, that's gonna go like that, which isn't isn't exactly what we want. So what we actually ooh and I've just realized something, I've left the spinner out. Just control Z to undo that. Um, I'm going to undo what I've done and just get that air screw and um, drag that out to there. That air screw, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, current, have to turn it into an object first, so current state to object. And then, where are we? Huh, delete. I'm just going to grab all those four there and connect objects and delete. And there we have it. We have the air screw all ready to spin, but it's still off axis. So what we need to do is go over here, click this button here, then move this. That will allow us to actually move the anchor point rather than moving the object. So as you can see, we're just getting it right in the middle there. You can click your middle mouse button, go to the front view and zoom in. That will help. Um, just to place it in the right position so we're getting a nice clean perfect circular rotation when we animate this I'm going to go to the top view and zoom in just to make sure that's at an acceptable position yes we can do that alright so middle click again and middle click on the one you want to be in okay so oh no get out of that, click on this one, or unclick the uh, anchor point modify button, and then go back to rotate, and as you can see, look at that, we can uh, rotate the propeller. Wonderful. Cool. Alright, so what we have here is our plane, all ready to go. Uh, I'm going to animate the, um, the air screw now. Man, that's a weird name. Okay, so basically what we do to animate something is we use what are called keyframes. Now a keyframe is exactly what it sounds like. It's a keyframe. Basically, you set along the timeline here, you set a point at which the data, um, it, it saves the data. It says at this time, along this timeline here, at frame zero, the propeller will be here. And then if you set another keyframe, say at frame 65, that the propeller will be there and then you click that button it will in automatically interpolate that means it will um, figure out all the in-between frames that will need to happen on every frame what will need to happen in that thing's movement to get from 0 to 65 and as you can see we've got a nice simple um, animation of the propeller so if I 
um, deselect it just so we can see it properly and just click play see we've got a nice slow just simple animation um, okay for the next bit we're gonna lengthen this uh, time frame to 250 frames just press enter once you've typed 250 oh wrong one down here <laughs> haven't used cinema 4d for a long time okay now you grab this end and you stretch it out and now we've got 0 to 250 on our on our frames list so we're just going to delete click and drag press delete and uh, delete those keyframes that we've created okay I'm going to create the uh, the floor now with the map on it so I'm just gonna close up this hold alt and click on these little two dots here twice and that will hide our plane from view for the moment uh, I'm just gonna go up to the special objects then create a floor zoom out a bit um, and here we are, oh no, I don't want a floor, I want a plane because a floor stretches onto infinity whereas we want to apply a texture to it and we don't want the texture to be stretched out of proportion so I'm going to go to the scale tool here actually no I'm not, I'm just going to go here I'm going to type in 2500 by 2500 centimeters and to make it, oh let's go 4000 okay and I'm just gonna increase the segments just to make it a bit more bit higher quality for reflections and shadows and things okay beautiful we have a lovely square now we want to apply a, a map to the bottom of this so I've got a map of Australia which is such a cool country that I'm just going to um, so I've double clicked in there creates a new material control Z double click creates a new material okay here we are I'm going to load up a color map which will say you know rather than just having the whole thing black we want some black here and some white here and that will uh, create our map so I'm going to find my map you go find yours wherever you've saved it I can't even remember where I've put mine there it is okay map Australia then I'm going to go to Map Oz Detail. I got a nice one. I don't want to create a copy at the project location because it's already there. And now, if I see you've got the the map on there, so I'm just going to click and drag this material onto the floor. And if we click Render, Control R, look at that. We have a lovely, lovely map of a lovely, lovely country. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um. All right, here's where I am, Hobart, little Tasmania, down the bottom. Yes. All right, so we've got the plane set up, we've got our textures on the floor set up, and we've um, got the map on the floor. And now I'm going to set up the render settings. So I'm going to go into the Edit Render Settings button up here. Um, going to stay on the output, I'm going to change the output to uh, da, what is it, 1280 by 720, half HD, or half full HD, um, and just press enter, I'm going to lock that ratio, and we're going to set it to render only the current frame right until the end where we'll change it. I'm going to go to the, oh, just going to right click in this blank area here, I'm going to click ambient occlusion, and I'm going to click global illumination now ambient occlusion um, creates shadows within an object and global illumination um, is a an advanced type of calculating lighting I'm just going to turn these things down just for the um, just for the uh, the drafting part of the part of the project so I'm just going to go back to ambient occlusion here. I'm going to turn the contrast up a little bit and then on the contrast thing here, oops, I'm going down. I want to go to about 6%. That will uh, make our ambient occlusion a bit, uh, bit stronger. Okay, so if you click and hold on here, I can just show you what the ambient occlusion does. Um, if we have the cube here, see this edge here? There's the, there's the way the map comes up to the cube, okay? So if we click render, 
um, it's going to oh there's no lights global illumination needs lights so to get a, a, a light going I'm gonna add a sky and um, I'm just gonna click render there and as you can see there's a very dark spot just in that crease there but if I turn ambient occlusion off you see that, that that darkness isn't there. It just adds a bit more uh, realistic uh, shadows to the project. So we've got the sky here. I'm going to uh, apply, uh, create, uh, load a preset of... Uh, <clears throat> going to load a material preset. It's going to be a an HDRI map. And... Uh, if you don't have this in your presets, um, you may just have to download one and just apply it to a material like we applied the uh, the map to the uh, to the floor to that plane. Do it exactly the same way through the color channel. Okay, so I'm just going to choose a random one. I've got a nice little outdoors sort of thing here, and I'm going to just drag that HDRI map onto the sky. And now when we click render, it's a lot brighter. So we've got some real life lighting happening there. And as you can see, that ambient occlusion is really kicking in. It looks really nice. So, oh, and this, this blue texture here, this blue um, over the top of it, don't worry about that. We can fix it all up with color correction in After Effects afterwards. So I'm just going to delete that cube. I will... Um, finish with the render settings. No, they're done. Render settings are all finished already. Silly me. Okay, what we've got to do next is you've got to choose where your plane's going to go from. I'm going to copy my own um, <laughs> original just so I can uh, relate. Oh, there's our plane. I'll go grab the plane. I'm going to click on it, use the scale button, and then I'm going to click outside of all this. If you click on one, it might stretch it funny like that so I'm just going to click outside and it will grab all three axes at once I'm just going to zoom out wonderful that looks about a good size so I'm just going to move it over to Tassie Tasmania I'm going to spin it around and look what we have here we have a plane ready to depart from the Hobart International Airport if we click render you'll see um, what our plane looks like with our map. So that is looking very nice. So what we're going to do now is create a path, a spline, which is that both the plane and the arrow underneath it will take. I'm going to middle click um, and then choose the top view. I'm going to click and hold this button and choose Bezier curve. I'm going to click on uh, just where the plane is and I'm going to uh, click and drag a bit over over Queensland, South Australia there and then I'm going to finish up in Northern Territory. Okay, then if we unclick you can see that's the way our, our plane and our arrow are going to go. Okay, next we're going to create a small rectangle spline. We're going to make that 25 centimeters by 5 centimeters going to have to rotate that and you hold shift and it locks in five degree increments when you rotate so you get it up 90 degrees I'm going to move it all the way over here you just lift it up a bit and there you have it see our tiny little rectangle there that will be the basis of our um, the line behind the arrow okay so to extrude that rectangle along that spline we need to go up here and uh, click and hold and grab a sweep nerves and click and control click and drop both of them under the sweep nerves and if we move that up you can see that our rectangle has been turned into a line so basically what we have to do is we have to choose this one here we're gonna turn up the subdivisions a lot uh, okay control Z so if we change this start growth end growth thing you can see it will um, extrude along so that's how we create the arrow right there um, why isn't it doing this for me spline uh-huh 
subdivided. We're going to go adaptive. No, uniform. Yes, there we are. So we click uniform on the spline. We turn that up, and it makes it a much easier, easier thing to do. But if we change the width, the height, the height doesn't do anything, I'm afraid. Aha! Change this here, y, z, x, y, and suddenly we have our arrow. Yay! Sorry, I should have done more work on that. Just skip, skip through uh, that bit, please. So sorry if you've watched it all. Um, okay, so if we go to sweep nerves, we can use this end growth here to animate it along, as we can see, and that's where our arrow is going to go, like so. Now we've got to create the little triangle head thing. So just close that up. Going to go to Polygon. We're going to choose this, the... Uh, click the triangle button. Look at that. Wonderful. And we're just going to go up to uh, this button here. Um, or click C, which converts it to an object which we can edit and we're going to go to the polygon mode here, we're going to select that polygon we're going to right click and go extrude and if we click and hold on that polygon you can see we can make that thicker and there you have it I'm going to do one more but this time I'm going to change my tool to bevel and if you can see here um, what it's actually doing is it's creating an angle which the light can reflect off nicely. So if we do that, wonderful. We're going to get a nice little edge which the light can reflect off and it'll look wonderful. You can see that edge there as you rotate around. Okay, so go back to selecting just the, the live selection tool. Um, click on your 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 polygon as it's called at the moment and just go back over here and click the whole object so when you move something you're moving the whole object not just one polygon I'm gonna scale it down a bit so it looks a bit large and I'm going to rename it to triangle there we are I'm going to rotate it so that it is in line with this oh, yeah, careful to rotate it just with the green one to make sure it is in line with this uh, back of the arrow that we've created there. I am going to make it thicker, the triangle, because it is um, appallingly, appallingly skinny. It's it's too skinny for the, uh, the body there, as you can see. So we're going to make it a bit fatter and then move it down just so it goes either side of the back end of the arrow as you can see there okay we're nearly we're nearly there check this out um, all we have to do now is animate the extrusion and animate the arrowhead to stay at the right spot and we also have to animate the plane to go along that spline as well so what we're going to have to do is take that spline press ctrl c and then click outside and ctrl v we have the spline of the uh, the plane's trajectory. Whoa, what a word, trajectory. Can't even say it properly. And then we're going to uh, right click on the plane here, the Raytheon A. I have no clue what that is. We're going to Cinema 4D and we're going to align it to a spline. So that means that um, the plane will be linked to that spline so that it will move properly at all. We may have to key the rotation and everything, but it will move along that spline for us. It saves a lot of work um, animating it. So just click on this button here, then click on that spline there. And suddenly, if we go position, if we change this position, look at that 100% is at Alice Springs or somewhere thereabouts, and 0% is back at the start. Okay, what we're going to do though is move that, uh, move the spline upwards, which will move the plane upwards, just so we've got a bit of a gap uh, between the two, um, 
between the arrow and the plane just so we've got some uh, some space to sort of uh, copy the look of the other one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the plane, I'm going to rotate it so that it is in line with the arrow. Check that out. We have we have a start. This is the start. Okay, so I'm just going to render it again. See what it looks like. Wonderful. Look at that. We have Melbourne, Bass Strait, an arrow, and a plane. All ready to go. I'm just going to uh, create a new material. So double click in that blank space there. Going to change the color uh, to... Let's go orange. Why not orange? Orange is a good color. There we are. I'm going to change the specular amount. So click on this little tab here. I'm going to change it to uh, colored. Uh, sorry, sorry, metal. I'm going to put the height of it right up so it's a shiny, shiny metal. And then I'm going to oh, change, make the width really narrow. So we've got a very shiny looking metallic substance. Put the height right up there. Okay. Now, click and drag that onto each of these things here. Render that, see what that looks like. How's she looking, Captain? Pretty awful. Pretty awful indeed. Let's change that back to uh, plastic. Bring the height down a bit, the width, and render it again. See what we've got. Wonderful bit more of an orange color there. Cool. Okay. Click out of that uh, render there and I'm going to now animate the uh, the plane along the spline. Actually first we have to animate the air screw in inverted commas because it's a funny word. Going to animate the rotation from zero to 250 all wrote and just rotating slowly the whole way so basically at zero frames we're going to set a keyframe for where the propeller is at the moment and at 250 move it right along we'll set a another keyframe for it having rotated six or seven times you know a fair few and then click that keyframe button again as we see when we scroll through the propeller is spinning beautifully and now because that um, that propeller is inside of this whole aeroplane object uh, that means that we can now still rotate the entire plane but that rotation will still work lovely of the of the propeller the rotation of the propeller will work nicely so if you see what I mean here I can grab this I will go to this tag here click on the tag which is the align to spline so we can animate this uh, this plane along the uh, the spline so go zero we'll just uh, control click on this little dot here and that's at zero frames and if we move to 220 frames, 210 actually, 210 frames. We move that up to 100% and just click that, control click on that little square there again. And as you can see, our plane has moved along the spline. So if we click play there, we've got our plane going along with the propeller spinning wonderfully. And there we have it. We can follow that all the way along. But as you can see, it's not turning along the line. So we have to do that ourselves. So just um, pick a point where it seems to be really, really out of whack before it turns the corner there. And then select it, um, rotate it just to where it should be, and click that little keyframe button. And then back at the start, we'll do that uh, rotating thing again. Rotate it in line with the arrow and click the little uh, the little key f keyframe button there. And if we see there, it turns ever so slightly. And then we go again. We can turn it again. Click there. Wonderful. And as you can see, the back's flying out there. I'm just going to take it along a little bit more. Change it. 
click the keyframe button and just keep going until the end like so here we are so up to 210 frames we turn it in line with where it should be click oh wrong one that one and if you see we've got that was relatively painless and now if we click un unselect it click play we now have a plane which follows the spline there look at that wonderful wonderful I am going to be very very fussy because I do like flight simulators and the such and when it turns this corner I am going to make it bank a little bit so I'm going to select it I'm going to set a keyframe I'm going to rotate it a little bit set that keyframe again go around the corner there I'm going to set that keyframe wonderfully there so there there you've got to change it on each of the keyframes otherwise it will because I hadn't rotated it on that keyframe it will go back to what I set that keyframe as and then it'll go back to my next rotation one see there it was a rotation but this one here didn't have any rotation that way so it wants to change back so I'm just gonna if you can see that she tilts swings around oh but there's no tilt there I'm just gonna set that keyframe and then it levels out a little bit but not quite yet set that over the top of that one and then keep going keep going keep going and stop and there we have it we have a nice little banking aeroplane there I don't know if that's very smooth or not let's have a watch see what it does that's alright that's that's cool it's only an animation it's not a flight simulator let's be honest okay so we've got the plane going along now we have to match the speed of the plane with our arrow so it's pretty much exactly the same thing we go to 10 210 210 frames get our uh, our sweep nerves as we said this end growth thing that's that's how we get it there we're going to control click um, on 210 frames at 100% end growth so control click sets the keyframe then we'll take our timeline all the way back to zero frames we're going to take this back to where it's going to start which will be uh, 7% so we control click there again and check this out we have a plane following an arrow along a spline wonderful now we just have minor details that is the basic basic idea of this whole tutorial the base idea is to teach you how to animate along a spline you can use this for absolutely anything if you check out some of that stuff on uh, giant octopus that I showed you at the start they have a lot of stuff where they animate uh, objects along a spline and that's the easiest way to um, to animate things along a path so cars uh, airplanes bikes tanks you know you can get all the basic um, movements just with a spline an align to spline and animate the position it's really really handy okay moving on moving on we're going to grab the arrow and uh, as we uh, the position and the rotation we're going to need to animate um, actually we can align this uh, this object also with the spline see if we go uh, uh, we'll have to copy the spline again copy the spline out of here control C control V and now we've got our spline for our triangle and if we go to align to spline again click on that select the spline there check this out position look at that now we only have to animate the rotation on that as well so if we set at frame 0 it's going to be at nine percent and then at frame 210 it's going to be at 100% control click to make the keyframe 
we can see it follows. Look at that, follows it all the way along. So basically what we're going to have to do is just animate the rotation like we did with the plane. So we're going to come in here. I'm going to hide the plane like we did before. Alt click on these little dots here twice just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to click on the rotation here. Uh, I'm going to move forward a few frames until the rotation's really out of whack. You can see there it's not right. So I'm just going to move that along so it's pointing in line with the spline. Click the keyframe button. Uh, I didn't set a keyframe at the start, so I'm going to have to go back here, change this so it's right, set a keyframe, and now when we go back to this other keyframe, click and drag, click and drag, we see that it's still in line. Okay, so it's actually rotating nicely. We go along here, we've got to set another one because it's rotating quite a bit along, ooh, only use the green one because otherwise it creates a lot of messy, messy animations. Here we are, we can see that it's going not too badly. Just keep keep rotating, create the keyframe, move along a bit, rotating, create the keyframe, move along a bit, rotating create the keyframe and I think we'll be right all the way up to 210 frames now. Then we rotate it once more right at the end, create the keyframe. And as you can see here, look at this, check this out. We have an arrow that follows a spline and a plane that flies above it. And I just think that is a really, really cool thing. See, it's, it's, it's rotating there nicely. Beautiful. One last thing. Um, the whole transition idea. So we've got our plane uh, animated along there. Uh, what I do actually have to do is stop the plane's animation about there. So at 210 frames per second, I actually want this. Not frames per second, 210. I want this back here. I actually want to change the whole uh, thing there, so I'm going to control click because we want the sh plane out of shot when this arrow goes forward to the little circle that we're going to create, which will make the transition. So I'm going to have to, hopefully not, hopefully not too drastically, uh, change the rotation of the plane like that. Yeah, that's that's not cool. We shall delete that one, and that one, and that one, and, and, and all these. We'll just redo them. So basically, we're going to have to have the plane rotated like so. Create the keyframe. Uh, rotate it, rotate it, create the keyframe. Uh, rotate it once more. Whoa, wrong wrong button I'm pressing there. Oh, hey, oops, rotate it. Make sure it's in line with the spline nicely. Set the keyframe, move along. Here we are. And we're going to set that to rotate around and up, set that there, and there we have it. She stops exactly there. So we just got to fix this last one in line with the spline like so. Tilt it a bit. I'm going to tilt it back a bit just so it looks like it's been flying. And if you see that, it goes, it'll halt and and we have something similar to giant octopus right there um, I'm just gonna do another quick render see what it's looking like we have an ambient occlusion coming in under the uh, under the arrow there um, we also have some ambient occlusion around the wings and the creases in the uh, in the plane there 
Um, we'll we'll sort out all the uh, other things in uh, After Effects, like the blue and everything that's coming out here. It's quite gross. But uh, yes, it's coming along nicely. Right, I will create an, a cylinder. Last bit, a cylinder. Cylinder, there it is. Right at the end of this spline, we're going to make it a bit shorter. Nice and fat, actually. About, about that big. About that big. Going to click on the cylinder here. We're going to make it have a lot of round segments and just leave it there. Okay, now we're going to create another material which has that strong, strong blue which we can key out um, in After Effects so that we can um, put something behind it, use it as a transition going to apply that to this. going to be totally flat, so this, this specular highlight, get rid of that. So going to basic, unclick specular. So now it's a very flat, flat color, as you can see there, which we will be able to edit out nicely in After Effects. Um, I'm going to grab the little uh, scale, <coughs> the scale tool, which is up here and as the plane, the arrow flies into that thing we're going to animate the scale of this thing so from about here, I'm going to set a keyframe for the scale of this thing I'm going to scale it up to about there as that plane moves in I'm going to set the keyframe there so we have a shrinking telling top, no not really um, why isn't it doing anything? Set the keyframe. Okay, scale's not working. I think it has to be a editable object first. So we can set the scale uh, here and at 220 we can scale it up. Set the scale. No. Wrong. Create oh, don't don't destroy the cylinder. I'm just going to scale it down, delete those keyframes. Um, it is an editable object now, um, but I'm not exactly sure why it's not working. Sorry, I would edit all this out, but I have absolutely no time. I'm just getting this quick one done while I have time. So I'm going to... Why? Aha! Uh -huh. I can't, no I can't, sorry. Um, I'm going to control Z until it comes back to a normal cylinder. There we are. So I'm just going to um, animate this radius using this. So I'm going to delete the keyframes there. Going to have this one start this radius and then as the arrow moves in to 220 this radius is going to increase a lot and so is the height so and then we have our little expansion happening check this out boom 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 okay next thing is the camera last thing come on Come on, Simon. Too slow. Sorry, I should have practiced this like a lot more, but a friend wants me to do it, so I'm onto it. Camera, camera, creating a camera. Now we're going to look through the camera by clicking that little button there. We're going to create an auto key, which will mean whenever we change anything with the camera, that's what it's going to look like. So here we are. I'm changing some stuff. I'm going to check in on this plane. We're going to start back here. Okay, I'm going to set the keyframe. I'm going to move along uh, to here. And let's see how that works. 
planes out of shot. I'm going to move down here. Now if we see this, it's going to be all... Alrighty, so I'm just moving along, creating a little camera move. Just moving because it's auto keying. It's every change I make at a certain frame, it's it's recording it. See, I didn't have to press the key button once there. It's just all in there, like so. I'm moving 220. I'm going to move this. It's going to be a, a whole focus on this blue circle so the plane flies along arrow underneath you should create a much better camera move I just didn't even try with that one and now from here uh, that's all good so now we've just got to animate um, the cylinder again so we're just going to click the radius and move that along to 250 and that's just going to blow right up till it covers the whole screen Done! Look at that! We have a little plane soaring along with its propeller spinning and it hits the thing and you have your transition. Please, please, please spend a bit more time making it better than this one. I've, this is so rushed, it's just unbelievable. Um, I usually pay massive attention to detail. But if we look here, check this out. We're going to render that last render shot before we get it all done all right looking good in alice springs not quite oh look look how close i got to alice springs it is actually there okay i'm gonna save this just gonna call it uh tutorial sorry about knocking the microphone there i do want to overwrite the existing file because the other one was rubbish now um, I'm going to show you how to render yours. I'm not going to render this one. I'm going to use my old one because it was better. I'm going to go to the output tab here. We've uh, set the, the height and width. Um, we want to do all frames, 0 to 250. And we want to turn the anti-aliasing up to best, um, 2 and 4. And ambient occlusion um, is okay. Don't need to increase anything. Yet. But the global illumination, I would recommend putting these up to medium um, and this one up to weak and then as you can see it does take a bit longer but it is a nicer look just anyway I'm gonna cancel that Th then what you need to do you need to go to out uh, save sorry and you need to choose a location where you're gonna save it um, I would recommend you save it as a JPEG or a or a TIFF sequence I would do JPEG just so you could use it in any other um, programs um, and then once you've chosen a location you click this button instead of this uh, instead of control R and that will render it in a special window as you can see oh whoops wrong one no sorry don't do that hold shift R rather than control R don't worry about this uh, I'm going to continue without saving, but it comes up in this special window and it will render out every single one of your frames along the bottom here. Um, may take a while, um, so I'm going to um, cut this video and get into After Effects and we'll start up with your finished render and my finished render. Okay, so here I am in After Effects, um, just back there, with the import file. So you go file, import, all that sort of thing. Um, and I've navigated my way to my plain map fly render. I have very, very creative titles. I've got my uh, my TIFF sequence, that's what I save mine as. So I'm going to click on my first one. I'm going to go down to the bottom here. Make sure TIFF sequence is selected, because then it will find all those numbered photos and say yep that's a clip not just a picture so I'm going to click open and it comes in uh, into After Effects 
I'm going to click and drag that onto this composition button that will create a new composition uh, with the width and height of my clip. So if you scrub through here you can see that um, that is my original render. Um, I would much prefer that you strive to do that well rather than um, follow my tutorial perfectly. Um, please ask me any questions in the comments. Uh, please do that because um, it wasn't a very good tutorial. Alright, I'm going to make a double of this composition. I'm going to go Control D, duplicate. That will duplicate the layer. I want to uh, go to Effect. Um, where are we? Keying. Keying. Uh, there. I want to go to Luma Key. And what Luma Key does is it takes out all the really dark parts until you've just got the really light bits left. So the light bits in this shot are the tops of the wings of the plane, which is good because what we're going to do with that, I'm going to turn this on. So we've just got these little bits of the plane wings here. We're going to uh, blur and sharpen, and we're going to do a directional blur. And we're going to turn the blur length right up. And... As you can see here, that is blurring, but we want it to go um, a different direction. So I'm just going to change it so it's going at sort of a 27 degrees, obviously, that angle. Yeah, 27 degree angle. And then I'm going to change the transfer mode to add. And you can see here that's created sort of like a highlight on there. So we can make them longer or shorter. We can change the direction. I'm thinking maybe that way because it sort of looks like motion blur. Um, I'm going to turn, I'm going to hit, click on the layer here. Press T, brings up the opacity control. I'm going to turn the opacity down a bit because that's completely off and that's completely on. But you want sort of something in the middle. That is just too intense to have on 100%. And because of the Luma Key effect, it will apply that to every frame. You don't have to do it to each individual frames. So at the start here we see a nice bit of highlight as we go on it keeps it through the whole composition there. Alright, now onto the keying bit. Uh, sorry, color correction. I'm going to create right click in on the blank here, create a new adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is an invisible layer to which you can apply effects and those effects um, will apply to every layer underneath that adjustment layer. So they're very handy for just doing one color correction thing over the whole composition. So I'm just going to go uh, right click in the effects controls here, go to color correction, curves. I'm just going to create a bit of a, a bit of a contrast curve here. Um, I'm going to take out a bit of the a bit of the red, um, which was a bit prominent. Um, you'll have to take out some of the blue from that other one most likely. Um, by using this blue blue channel here very subtly I might add do it very subtly and then if we scoot across we can see that it looks a bit different see without the effect with the effect it's it's much nicer it gives it a, a characteristic it's charismatic yeah anyway we're going to select this bottom layer which has the blue in it we're going to go effect keying uh, color key. We're going to click the eyedropper and select that blue color. Then we're going to turn up the color tolerance until that blue there disappears. We'll turn up the, the feather and look at that. There's your uh, your keying. All done. Now you can uh, import a random picture. Oh, I'm going to import a random picture. Um, this is something I made earlier and I'll drag that into this composition at the bottom and you can see it's coming through there so when this keying happens, look at this, ready? check it out, there's our transition thank you very much for staying with me through this very disorganized but hopefully useful uh, tutorial the techniques in here are some very basic ones that I use all the time 
um, and they just come in handy so much. Um, even though the tutorial is not amazing, you will find use for the align to spline and all that sort of thing. Keying in After Effects is another simple, simple but very useful um, tool. See, I could grab the uh, that color key. I could change that color to green, and suddenly we haven't got any plane left. Look at that. It's also a very interesting effect. Can you see that? I've got that picture behind. The glow is coming through as it starts to disappear. It's a bit yuck towards the end, but interesting, interesting. Anyway, I'm going to undo that. Back to the blue. And um, to render this, you go Composition, Add to Render Queue. Uh, we get this window at the bottom here. Just go in here, make sure this is all on best settings, full resolution, all that sort of thing. Uh, output module. Um, you want it, you can choose between AVI, JPEG sequence. I go video for this part of it. Um, if you're going to put sound effects in, make sure you click the audio output. Um, and then you click this one and choose where you want to save it. Click render and it's all done. Thank you very much for being so patient. Um, please ask me any questions you want. Uh, I may even make a follow up video if I've made a massive, massive boo boo. Alright, everybody. I'm Simon. Thanks again. Bye.